Hi. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome to the Hona Podcast. No, the Hona Podcast with Mike and... Shall. <laughs> wow. I'm finally glad we're doing this. Same. We've I think always... it's been a long time coming. Yeah. Why are we doing the Hona Podcast? Should we go straight into it? Well, the Hona Podcast, essentially, I think... When we first started off, we were always on Instagram Live, in that our was kitchen. a fun time. Pre-baby. <laughs> no Billy was a thing then. We used to have a little wine and a whiskey. <laughs> and we always used to get such lovely feedback. We used to get really in touch with the community. Yeah. And I think it's important as owners of a brand to be visible, to be accountable. Yeah. So I think this is a way for us to start being more visible. It's a way for the community to start seeing us more, mm. to understand who Honer is, who they're buying from, as well as that, giving the community and nail techs advice and tips, what we've learned over the years. Because I come from a business background. You're a nail tech of decades. (laughs) Wow, (laughs) don't make me sound old. Yeah, about 15 years, I'd say. Yeah, so. so we've got a wealth of experience that we can share. Yeah. I think it was a real good thing that we're finally getting to do this. Because how many times have we said over the years about Let's just get live more. Let's do it yeah. more. Let's do it. But when, for those who don't know, we had a baby a year and a half ago now. It's going to be now and too. And any mums out there trying to find time in the evenings to do content or to film content or even just doing a podcast, I guess, is nigh on impossible. Yeah, absolutely. So, I think, like you say, it brings us back to it was so much fun doing those lives and it did keep us really engaged with customers and It was just really fun. So I think, like you say, it's it's an expectation. I think now we're probably the only people in the UK who don't have a podcast, first and foremost. (laughs) There's an expectation that the community should see us. They should know what's going on. They should know who they're purchasing from. And yeah, yeah. so that's why we're starting the podcast. But uh, do you want to, do you want to get, I tell you what, we'll get straight into it, but we're going to do a new segment every single Start the podcast, let's start on a high. We're going to do a spotlight of the week. (laughs) Yeah. Enter jingle. (laughs) As Grace would love that. (laughs) So, yeah, spotlight of the week is a special mention, a special shout out to somebody from the nail industry who has done something notable. It could be an amazing or creative nail art design. It could be something where they've just given back to community or it can just be generally just somebody who needs that little bit of a pick-me-up. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to start one off. I went to say, with that said, oh, you haven't got one. Yeah, no, I'm going to start one off because when we mentioned about this in the office this week, straight away all of the girls mentioned the same name and that was our lovely Lynn Hancock. Oh, Lynn. For For those who don't know. I was going to say it's... I know, it's... Lynn's Nails and Beauty. With a Z. With a Z, because she's hip. (laughs) She's cool. (laughs) Yeah, so Lynn came to everyone's forefront. Basically, Lynn is very local to us, and she is so cute, because every single time that she knows that we've either had a big sale on or something's gone viral, she offers to come in and help pack, bless her, (laughs) off her own time. Oh, that's a nice one. I think this has been, like, the second or third time now she's actually offered. I think Lynn's been to all our events as well. Yeah, she's an absolute diamond, so thank you very much. Oh, nice way to start. (laughs) So, should we get into the episode? Absolutely. So this is episode one of the Horner podcast with Mike and Charles. <laughs> and it's going to be about who Honor is, how we started, our origin story, mm. Charles' background, my background, a little bit of a, a get to know you, get to know us, so that moving forward, you know what we're about. Because this might be the very first time you've heard of Honer. Yeah, so if anyone is listening or watching for the first time, because I know that we're going to stream it on all different platforms. Um, we are Hona, originally called Home of Nail Art. Yeah, so Hona's, <laughs> Hona is actually an acronym for Home of Nail Art. And how Home of Nail Art first got started was down to COVID. What a lockdown, baby. You're going to do your tapping. <laughs> Am I tapping? Yeah, so Hona, we are a lockdown baby, Hona yes. is a lockdown baby. So let's cast our minds back to lockdown one and... Oh my God. Doesn't it seems it feel... like so yeah. long ago. Yeah, was it 2019? Yeah. Lockdown one, 
Charlotte, like every other nail tech in the country, got shut down. So Charlotte had a successful salon. Thanks. <laughs> Charlotte had a successful salon and it got closed. Boris yeah. came on the telly and said, do not go to work. I know. And you and every other nail tech in the country was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what, what do you we mean? do now? Does his nails work? <laughs> but as a double whammy, I also was told to stay home. And this was before the the companies were getting paid. What was it called? Furlough. Furlough. Before furlough. I got made redundant within the first two, three weeks of lockdown. So we went from being... I would say we were comfortable. We would enjoy, mm. like, we only had the house to pay, the mortgage, the cars, the dog. <laughs> but we gone, we went from being comfortable, enjoying, to all of a sudden having, see, like, absolutely nothing coming back into, income into the house. Mm. It was I think scary, that's, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that's the thing, obviously, being self-employed. The you risk, ca- You had that security over the job, but straight away, like you say, redundancy. When I was made with, yeah, when I, and it's this just, is, in hindsight, I wish I could speak to my old boss now. Because he panicked and yeah. he just made me redundant before But I think the that furlough. happened to a lot of people as well. Like, yeah. I know so many people that just got made redundant straight so, away. Yeah, so we got made, we were adding household income went to zero and we, we just panicked. But do you know what it was? There was a, a silver lining. Mm. And the silver lining was a Mexico holiday that we had a <laughs> refund for. <laughs> Oh, it's sad to say it's a silver lining because I would have loved to have gone yeah. to Mexico. But that silver but... lining gave us £2,000 to yeah. money we didn't think we had. And I remember it vividly. You were sat on the bed. You were quite upset. You, I was sat on the bed in the spare room and you were on the desk and you, you we were like, oh, what can we do? What, we, what can we do? And I was already creating, just as a creative person, I wanted to just keep doing stuff. Yeah. And one of the things that like, a lot of clients actually got in touch with me and said that would I make press on nails? And I saw loads of people that were doing it online and it was never something that I thought, oh, are people even going to want like nails in lockdown? But people did. So I think like you and I don't know, a million of the nail techs in yeah. the UK started making press on nails. Yeah. And you were sourcing your supplies from everywhere. And I was like, I bet you I can make some of these supplies to help you increase your profit margin. Yeah. And so... I remember I, I went on, oh my God, I went on the computer and I made decals, so like water yeah. transfer decals. Yeah. And <laughs> I went to, I bought them on Amazon, decal paper, and I made these decals on my computer. Go on, tell them the design. It was the very first product <laughs> owner I ever saw. It was pink donut water transfer decals. Literally. And I still Thomas have, the, I have the very first product <laughs> framed in the office. So yeah, it, it's... We started on making track. Piss out of those. Yeah, you did take the piss. <laughs> and so we I started just trying to make supplies for Charlotte to increase her profit margin. And then you were part of a, a WhatsApp group and you were like, oh, to all the other nail tech girls and guys, Mike's making these. Did you want some? Yeah, and, and then they you were started having them. And you started like, telling your friends and they were like, Oh, ask Mike, can you make these type of ones? Whether yeah. it was like Harry Potter ones, Personal flame or one. flame ones. And I was like, mm. Yeah, and I was charging a pound a decal. Yeah. So they were probably costing me, I don't know. A pound for ten. Yeah. So I was making quite. I said I was making quite a lot of profit. And I didn't factor in the time making them. I didn't factor in having to go to a print shop to get them yeah. printed out. I didn't factor in any of that in. But in my mind, I'm like, oh, it's only costing me yeah. a pound, and I'm making ten pound from one. Yeah. Honer was made from necessity. We started off just trying to keep afloat. One thing led to another. Charlotte's friends started asking for more important, well, more important, stuff, more creative stuff like glitters. And we sourced glitters. We were oh hand God. pouring them in our kitchen. It was kitchen. the pouring of that. The poor dog so what we did, was covered. <laughs> so we, what we got these little glass jars. I think some might be available on the website now. We got these yeah. little glass jars. We folded the up OGs. paper. We folded up paper into a cone. And to can we, them in. And we just poured them in. And we had an overflow cardboard box underneath. <laughs> it's the world's worst way to do it. It was so stupid. We were all covered in glitter. But, like, but it's but funny then, now, like, to look back at how we started and compare it now to to our processes now of how we source we manufacture we do a lot of stuff oh in house God, i yeah. don't think we have a lot to of people on, but realize. i say like honor, like the very first step is always the hardest step and i think covid made us they pushed us to make that first step because we had nothing else to do mm. we had all the time in the world we're lucky we had that holiday cash injection refund yeah. so we had time and yeah. Me left alone with time, like I, I go crazy, I have to do something. <laughs> and so, yeah, so Hona is a COVID baby. 
our lives got thrown into a washing machine and, and honer is what came out. Yeah. And... I think what a lot of people didn't realise as well is obviously, like you say, it was a COVID baby. It happened during lockdown. But then that time that I went back to work, when I was allowed to go back to the salon, mm. you were running that on yeah, your own. So, so that's how Hona started and how we continued. Is you've just got to be consistent. And Hona, I was consistent with. I, I got made redundant from my job. So... I was picking up like labouring work here and there. I even went knocking people's doors, like saying cut the lawn, washing windows, whatever I did just to get more money in the house. And on the side of it, I was selling decals, these glitters, like anything I needed to do to try and I keep to try and pay our mortgage. And I stuff. think it's quite and, good as well. The difference of skills that both of us had the yeah. fact that you were obviously able to create a, a website then yeah. for people to be able to go on and buy these things. And then having, once I was back in the salon, I was able to almost get back into it and tell you, oh, okay, now we're going to need this coming out or we're going to need like chromes or, or flakes or foils. Yeah, and then it and was then, like, it just snowballed from yeah, there, so I we, think. We're a very fortunate team that you had all this experience and skill and I had the, the know-how and the, the determination basically to go find and do this stuff. And together it's just i don't think it would ever have worked if covid didn't happen i don't know if i would have been able to commit the time mm. i don't know if you would have be able to commit it the time with the salon running a busy salon yeah cause... so yeah so one thing led to another we always knew from the beginning that Hona was going to be releasing its own gel system and it was highly important for us because during this entire time there was the whole talk about allergies and safety and i'm sorry if she doesn't want but Georgina, so the pe person who's been with us the longest, our very first employee, she has a severe allergy. Yeah. She was working with us before we even had any gels and we knew we, we couldn't even, she can't even be in a room no. with certain products. No. So from the get-go, it was just an, it was a no-go that we're, like, we're going to have to go down this route. And it's, the, it's it's been forced upon us. Yeah. And while I've been learning and while we learn in the industry as a whole, it's just been such the right decision to make time and time again. Yeah, obviously, again, for any of you that have never heard of us or don't know, we are a fully hypoallergenic gel system. Yeah. So we didn't, I don't think that was even a conversation when we first started out with glitters and foils and things like that. Like no, we never even... We, we, it felt like a mountain away, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then the whole talk of allergies and everything during COVID, it gave us that push. And I think you say it perfectly, like why would you not want to future-proof yourself? Yeah, so... So... I knew instantly, like with Georgina, like we wouldn't have been able to... We, we wouldn't have been able to release those type of products. Well, no, because so, <laughs> our and it was first the, employee couldn't and, have had them on. And by working with the chemists we do, like we've, yeah. we're so, we are so spoiled with experience from that mm. chemist. We've got a UK chemist we work with. We've got a USA chemist we work with. We've got a German chemist we work with. Each of them are fab. Like we we're so, so fortunate mm. that I can literally get them on the phone, have conversations about anything, whether it's about... TPO, that's originally in the news, or whether it's about different forms uh, of HEMA or whatever, I can just have human conversation and they can really explain it to me, like why it's important, why it's not important. Yeah. So, yeah, I do think Hona's been on a real big journey up until this point. And I've always said from the beginning, it'll get easier, it'll get easier, it'll get easier as we grow. And it just hasn't. It's, it's just exploded, hasn't it? I think this year in particular, and I don't even really know why, it's just, it seems to have just gone from strength to strength. Strength to strength. And not only that, I think what it is, but our, our actual team has grown yeah. as well. I think what it, our biggest thing is that we are community led. Hona, oh my God, our eyes and ears are on our community day in, day out. <laughs> so whenever they're saying XYZ type of design is fab, and mm. if we're not quite able to be able to deliver that type of nail art, mm. we will get it. We will start the process of getting it. Yeah. I think maybe people don't know now, but I very recently actually gave up my salon. Go on, tell them your story then, yeah. <laughs> so I think a lot of people just assume that it's been me and Charlotte yeah. from the very beginning. And it really hasn't. Now, and it hasn't. Like we said earlier, like Char lockdown made Charlotte close a salon. And then when the salons and the, and the country reopened, Charlotte went back to work. Yeah. I obviously got made redundant. So I was doing odd jobs and doing that. Yeah, so you so could like, I solely focus I on that. But Honda then wasn't a 80 hour a week job or whatever. No. Like I was getting 
one or two likes on a post <laughs> and I would go in, comment to that, <laughs> comment, hey, then I'd go into the DMs, try and strike out the conversation. Like, I'd come home from work in the salon and I think you used to panic, didn't you, thinking that, why would people want to buy from me? Yeah. People need to hear your voice. Please voice note why them. They, my whole thing was, why do they care about a bloke? Why would they speak to a bloke? Why would they speak? Why would they care but about there's what? there's so many people in this oh, industry yeah, that know, are like... I know now, I know now. Male at, founders. Yeah, yeah, I know now. But at the time, I was like, yeah. they don't care. Like, they don't, I felt like an imposter. I and think... Like, Go on. But yeah, anyway, back to, come on, your story. So I obviously, like you say, went back to the salon, but I had that same salon for a couple of years then I obviously went in to move into a bigger salon because it was just I've always been the type of person that I want to look towards that next thing and having the the sort of bigger salon with more staff it was that was what I envisioned and it just seemed to be then that once we started going Hona was taking off more so I then yeah. was like okay do you know what I'm going to close the salon on a Tuesday and I'm going to work with Hona on a Tuesday and then it just didn't really work that way, did it? Because I no. felt like I was like there for one day a week, back to doing my salon work. Then in the evenings, we'd come home and we'd do messages and community things. Yeah, this year I made the decision to close so, yeah. the salon. And I am officially now with Hona full time, which is really, Welcome. really exciting. Even <laughs> though she's what... a co-owner. She... <laughs> but it's what the end goal was. Yeah. So my sort of role within the company now I do a bit of everything but my main role is product testing so yeah you're um, definitely quality control you're our you're our in-house nail tech if that makes sense yeah. so what I mean by that is Charlotte knows what's popular, what's not popular, what comes in season, what goes out of season. When nail techs are starting to think about buying their Christmas products or when they're thinking about saving their money because it's a quiet time. Charlotte goes through all our chemist conversations, which we have, and say, this is what we want tweaked with this product. This is what yeah. we want tweaked with this one. This product needs a complete reformulation. This is why. This is what we're trying yeah. to achieve. You're our in-house nail tech where we throw everything at you and you tell us from the industry point of view yeah this is what this should be this is what that should be yeah i think again having and and so many years in the industry trialing loads of different things trialing what works what doesn't work i think that does really give me a little bit of a and you come from a benefit you come there. from the background of a you used to work in a salon as an employee then you went self-employed in our back bedroom then you went into a salon with just you and one other staff. Then you grew to like a super salon <laughs> with multiple floors. Yeah. So I feel like you've gone on the journey of a nail tech, even to becoming an educator as well. You've yeah. gone on to, to having your own studio, education studio. You've gone on the journey that a lot of... a bit of everything. Yeah. So you have a wealth of experience in all these areas that is just becoming valuable. Thanks. You're welcome. No, I love it. And I love now being able to... Almost take that next step. I feel like as a nail technician, you've always got to evolve and grow with how you see your career going. And, and obviously, I definitely saw There's this. definitely a whole episode on what success looks like oh, for 100%. a nail tech, which look out for that one in the future. We will that time. <laughs> yeah, because we thought success looked to you was a super salon, didn't it? Yeah. I keep on a super, I've never called her a super salon in my life. I've, Do you know I've what? said it twice now. <laughs> One of I've my clients, it. It she was actually a last client of mine, Sarah, shout out to Sarah. She always said Charlotte and her super salon oh, and God. yeah, bless her, but loved yeah, it. So. <laughs> so shall we move on to our next section of the podcast? Yeah, so I feel ev like every week... We're going to have a community question. It can be via email. It can be via our Facebook Hona community. It can be via Instagram. So look out for the question and engage where you can, just because it's a nice bit of fun. It's a nice bit yeah. of engagement for us both. It gives us some nice, funny content. So I actually don't know what this is. Uh, so I've taken a few here. Go on, tell um, me. So Lowry... what's the question? So we put a question in the Facebook community, which yes. was... It was on, I can't remember. It was, it was. Nail Tech Horror Stories. Yes. So, so I haven't seen the answers here. Basically, the question that we put in there was, what story comes to mind that still haunts you to this day? There and you I go. absolutely loved reading some of these. It was quite disturbing. <laughs> there were some that I probably couldn't read out. Before we start, I'm baffled that there even this type of horror stories. like I, Oh, my God. Because I wouldn't yeah. go to... So I obviously get my nails done by you now, so it's mm. different. But I wouldn't go to a barber's with knowing that, I don't know, like, 
I've got gel in my hair. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Never mind. So I'm a little bit dubious what oh, horror stories this honestly, could be. Honestly, I think in this industry, I think because my background is full beauty as well. So I do everything. And I know a lot of people that may be listening, they may be not just nail techs, but lash techs or general beauty therapists. So you see a lot going on. And oh my God. So this is our these. community Q&A question for this week. <coughs> Nail tech horror stories. Nail tech horror stories. We're going to keep everyone anonymous, just in case. <laughs> we don't know whether clients will listen. But yeah, so one of the ones that stood out to me, which is quite rank. Doing a pedi on a new client that had dirty feet. She stuck her dirty foot out to me and said, lick it. <laughs> No way. <laughs> Honestly, if that happened now, this client would have been asked to leave, but I was a beginner and I just took it. I'm sure she was joking, nah. but it makes me gag to this day thinking about the it. The fact that they're dirty first and foremost. <laughs> it goes back, would you go... Oh, my If you're getting God. your feet done... That's horrific. You'd wash your feet first, surely. I would. And or, or is it like... Is there an expectation? No, I'm going to... I'm going to the salon... I want to get my money's worth. They can wash my feet as well. I as suppose do my you nip. get two different types of people in this world. Like I can throw one in there. I had a waxing client that came straight from a spin class. I personally could not do that to somebody. Lady, I just couldn't. Don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, there are some in ooh, here. Ooh, brother. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So she said lick it, okay. So she said lick it. You're a freak, whoever you I... are. I'm glad we're anonymous. <laughs> client, if you're listening and you've done that, shame on you've, you. You've done the dirty there. I had a client that came for the first time. This seems to be a theme. First time clients. First like you time, never yeah. know what yeah, you're going to get. They, they always, the, the nail tech's always fully booked for go, the second one. Oh my God. I did her nails. All was sparkly and lovely. She then asked me if she could order takeout to my house. And I was like, girl, I have anxiety. I can't say no to you. So I said, sure, you can just eat it on the way home, can't you? And she just smiled, smiled. She proceeded to eat greasy KFC on my brand new nails and I didn't even take a picture of yet all over my sofa. And then she asked if she could use the toilet. Then she spent half an hour mm. in the loo with her vape and when I asked her to leave multiple times, she just mentioned her best wasn't here yet. And I had another client in my chair staring at me like, what the fuck is this girl on? Then she proceeded to leave her rubbish just on my floor next to my sofa, hadn't even paid yet, and then when it came to pay and said, oh, I haven't left enough money for you. No. How horrific is that? I've got visions that? of a fresh manicure <laughs> with KFC chicken <laughs> and a fape. <laughs> Not leaving your house. That's weird. Whilst There's some weird got, people in the world. Whilst you've got another client sat there. Could you... Um, oh, drop in the oh. comments if you've got any weird client stories like that. That's... Awful. People got no shit. Bless her. She suffers with anxiety as well. And it's just <laughs> Excuse Hello. me. I hope your KFC is nice, but... Please leave. Go. <laughs> oh, my I hope, God. I hope your, your chicken wings are lovely. <laughs> Have my money, please. please. Nail techs are the funniest people in the world. You get awkward <coughs> asking to get paid. Oh, I know. Oh, it's like... The amount it's of people not are, nice. Oh, it's... How can it not be nice? It's they know they gotta pay you. It's but you feel like you're charging your are besties. You a, are you a co-op with your fiver when you're buying your your chocolate? Like, <laughs> oh god, oh god, oh I, god, oh god. This one's oh, this is rank. My client took her hand out of the lamp and said her ear was itching. Proceeded to stick her finger in her ear, and as you can only imagine, what came out stuck to the inhibition layer. Not to gag, but I still get nightmares. I got a vision. Oh, that's not nice. Would would the earwax stick to the inhibition there? Yeah. Yes. Could be a new treatment there, guys. <laughs> Wipe that inhibition there. <laughs> oh, I just wouldn't even want to touch it. I hope she used gloves. Oh. Oh, this poor person. This all happened. Do in... we have loads? Yeah, we had a few. This happened all in one week. A client took a pregnancy test in my toilet. A client told me she was having an affair. I've had that a few times. <laughs> Not an affair, just... People... <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa. People telling whoa. me that an You ho. What a confession. <laughs> First episode. <laughs> First episode. I've had a few affairs. Oh, Good God, tad. no. <laughs> Clients telling me of affairs. And a client who became one of my best friends got served with a divorce paper mid-nails... <gasps> we sat off her toes and went to the pub. 
<laughs> Go on, girl. Oh, my God. Divorce papers served. As in... Is that like e- a... Oh, right, right. Email. An American where someone just died. Somebody walks in. <laughs> so, somebody's in <laughs> disguise. Been You've been served. <laughs> oh, well, they were quite amusing. Quite rank. I'm not going to lie. I think you've got to be careful of first-timers. First-time <laughs> first first time clients, little disclaimer, wash yourselves. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, that was gross. our customer community q and <laughs> It's going to be one every episode. So look out for wherever we post it. It'll be either via our community, Instagram, via our email channel. So make sure you subscribe to our emails or you follow us on Instagram or Facebook. And just jump in our community. There's loads of tips and, and tricks in here anyway. Oh, that's... And help us create content for this podcast. Absolutely. And get your clients to wash themselves. 100%. Dirty bastards. <laughs> so, anything that you want to reveal that we've got coming up with oh, Hona soon? Oh, another segment is it? What's going to be behind the scenes of Hona? Yeah. Insert jingle. Da, 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 da. <laughs> All right, Rosie. <laughs> Something like that, isn't it? Copyright. So, yeah, every week we'll talk about a little bit of a something behind the scenes of Hona. Mm-hmm. Keep you guys up to date with what's going on. And what is going on? When is this going out? I don't know if I, I don't know. Anyway, we've just... Here we go. We are in full Christmas party swing. planning swing. Yes. Yeah. So, as you may or may not know... Every year, Hona hosts loads of events, but this time we're hosting a Christmas party. Well, but it's, the it's co- Christmas, it's co- Christmas so Christmas I, I, party. I came up with the name. <laughs> Don't know if anyone liked it. We just said, "Yeah, here it is." Yeah, it's called the After Christmas Christmas Party. Why got an After Christmas Christmas Party? In a nutshell, nail techs don't really get a Christmas party. No, and we're so busy through December. Especially you poor you nail just, techs you who are sat in their bedroom. <laughs> if you're listening to us now in your bedroom and you don't really have any workmates and all. We can be your workmates. Yeah. So we're hosting the after Christmas party. It's in January when it's traditionally a little bit more quiet for you. You can actually let your hair down and celebrate and get that Christmas rush like Yeah, so done. We're, we're in full swing for that. We've actually just hired our entertainment. Oh. I don't know when this is going out. I don't I won't reveal. I won't reveal. I won't reveal. I don't think I will think... steal Georgina's thunder. <laughs> But it's good. It's so good. I tell you what. I'm so they, they excited tra- for she, it. I was a hard no. I was like, I'm yeah. way too expensive. Yeah. And she got 80% off. So it makes Honestly. me think, A, they would even just made a number up at the beginning. I and think we'll, they did. They must have. They must Cause have. Because no G ain't that good a negotiator. I was going to say, it's, Yeah. But anyway, we got 80%. And I think they manipulated me because you can't say no to that price discount. Mm. It's even, it's way more than I would want to pay for any type of entertainment. Yeah. And because they was like, I was like, guys, are we getting a bargain or have they just absolutely hustled us? It's <laughs> obviously like hustled. I feel like we're going into this without saying it. So, so look out for us. Yeah, we've got. But yeah, it's going to be in, I think you say, Bristol. In January. Yeah, so we're, Honer is based in South Wales, so we don't want everything to be in Cardiff, Newport, South Wales. So we're venturing into England, so we're, we're going to stay in the southwest. But the Christmas party is in Bristol on the nineteenth of January. Yes, uh, amazing venue, amazing entertainment. It's twenty five pound plus VAT for the ticket, but you get thirty pound Honer uh, store credit. You get a welcome drink. You get two drink token. It's virtually free. Yeah. So not you know the only reason we got tickets is just to keep track of numbers and stuff yeah. like that. So it's practically a free event. You get way more back. The entertainment's going to cost more than what we would make in the tickets. <laughs> right? But yeah, stay tuned for that. It's and exciting. if anyone has been to any of our parties before, I say parties like events, events darling. Events. events, darling. They're not <laughs> yes. parties. They're events. But we know how to throw a good party. We do. Yeah, the we commu- have the nail tech community go feral. I think you guys don't get out much. I think because a lot of us are self-employed and do work on our own so when it's we get a chance to get together with like-minded people yeah like and that's a good you're thing just about gonna like, have a good time the amount of groups that are formed like friendship groups from going to not just honor events but events in general and then they've linked up and become a French solo nail text oh, group, yeah i love up. seeing the group oh it's the best feeling in the world it's just love feel like proud parents yeah you don't you especially like, with the younger proud, lot as proud well. little, little parents <laughs> oh no you Michael is actually doing a heart symbol for our audio listeners, but he's doing the proper old school way. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is that way. No, it's, I can't even think. Oh, that's the one. More going to be the, proud. It's, what's I mine? Think, I think it? it's that. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, so thank you for listening to us. This is our first ever podcast we've ever done recorded. So 
Rough around the edges? Yes. Real? Yes. Will it get better? <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Hopefully. Will it get worse? <laughs> Likely. But who knows? What should we so talk I tell about you what, next week? So next week's episode, why don't we talk about something which we've struggled with when we've learned to get better is work-life balance. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I laugh because I feel like... But we know what not to do. Yeah. We know what not what to do. We've just got to put it into place. 100%. I think that would be so, really yeah. useful. Thank you for listening. Thank it's going to so be on the usual channel. So subscribe on your streaming platform. Is that, yeah. what, the, is that what the pros do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> subscribe like, and subscribe. all that jazz. <laughs> and uh, join us next week and we'll be in touch. Peace, Peace and love. love.